Welcome, welcome. Last year, had a modification of a bike, and that's something that's always intriguing to me, modifying the bike for the user. I like to have my bell upside down. When my thumb is underneath, I feel it's better to, on top, their thumb has to come up and over. I like my thumb down below. Just a little thing there. Mm -hmm. More importantly, is this little thing down here. Yeah, little grab bar. Yep. So Calvin and Calvin had the idea last year, and then I kind of put it in to put this little one together to prototype the idea. Yeah. But you crimped the ends, drilled some holes, matched up some angles. Yep. Works yep. for a little bit. Well, why, why, would, why would you even want this thing? It helps picking up this, this rig. Ugh. It's not the lightest thing. No carbon fiber here. So just simply grabbing it and getting up over a log, right? getting it up into a car, that's nice. So yeah, it worked really nice. Crimps, well, they crack and that's natural. So it's time to make a commitment to the modification. Second uh, floor there, please. Going up. So you can see here, we have bar coming across here. It's enough room to get your hand under. Uh, we don't want it down too low, can't grab it. So let's see the tube that we're going to use. We Not have just this any beautiful section of tubing. You can see there was some brazing on it before. Look at that. The mighty MB1. Yeah, Bridgestone MB1. Pretty legendary. Pretty neat bike. We're going to make this permanent with a with a hot glue gun that is actually brazing. It's a delicate process. You don't want to get things too hot. You right. can't have things too cool, otherwise it won't flow. Quick disclaimer, not a frame builder. Not a frame builder either. This is a complete experiment. First, some modification. We need a good butt there. We're going to do what's called mitering. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to attach it with some heat. Then the beautiful finish. Here's our section of tubing. It's going to go right in there. We'll leave that in there for right now. Okay. So it's touching here at the top, touching here at the bottom, and there's a gap here in the middle. So what we're doing with this mitering, what we're gonna be filing to get this miter, is we're gonna be getting this to perfectly contour to the material. Because the better it contours, the stronger it's going to be. So I'm gonna just make a couple marks here. And then we'll have to go get it going on files. What kind of file? That's right. So now that he's nicely fixtured, we're using the radius jaws of the AV5 axle vise. Now for some utensils to do our carving. So this, we have a series of files. So no park tool does not make some files, but we have a collection of, of mine, a series of, uh, well, we would call rat tail. It's the traditional uh, mechanics term of rat tail. And of course, if it's half of that, that's a half rat. So the radius here is gonna give us our, our, our cut. This is probably gonna be our best bet here. This half round. And files, they cut on the push. Nothing happens on the pull. And so when you pull on a file, it has a tendency to dull the file. So typically you'd wanna push, lift, push, lift, push. So we are, let's get our first, Little bit down here. So we have a seat tube and we have a down tube. So we're using these to keep alignment. So this is close to the, the diameter of this tube here, and then this one's close to the diameter of our down tube. Rock solid. That's pretty good. Little off the bottom. Match what you have, Truman. See what we got here. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. It's pretty darn good there. Match up here. Yeah. Okay. Matching here. That is. Time for some more prep. Here's our tube. The mitering looks nice. It's going to fit right in here. Oh, that's it's going to be a beauty but this paint's gotta go. So our brazing cannot be on paint. We need to get down to the steel. First, we have to look at an air hole. 
Back here, you can see we're actually going to use this back one, covering that because I want that for the air hole. When you're brazing, gases need to escape. But the front end is going to need an air hole as well. So we are going to take a marker. We're gonna mark roughly where the front end goes. So right about there, a little hole just to breathe, just to let that uh, the gases breathe. Center punch. Right there. Oh, just through the first one, we don't want to go all the way through. Gonna use a wire wheel. Eye protection, ear protection. more over here. That should do us. So enough clean area. We have to hand sand some of the product. Certainly with the heat, we're gonna trash the paint a good bit. Uh, that's gonna be another fun project, but now we're down to some good clean metal. So front part, done. The back part is for Truman. Looks like Calvin got some stuff done here. Got to clean up back here. I'm going to remove this tire, but uh, let's start doing some stuff. <laughs> Take the marker, kind of go around everything that we're going to be hitting. This is going to go. So Calvin's got the air hole down here. We don't have to drill one up here because we have this, uh, this boss. So we kind of have to clear around that boss. Gonna be a little bit of clean in there, but we'll get to it. Here we go. So the heat is gonna be almost all the way around here. So I'm gonna take a little bit more paint off the sides. Made a little mark. Now we kind of know where we were intending it to go. Let's burn some holes. Or not, let's try not to. Things are about to get hot. We hope not too hot. So this is a sample of some welding that's done here in the welding department. This is a wire feed weld. It's thicker material. Here we're actually melting the base material. We're trying not to do that here. Brazing is a different process, however, a little bit of wire feed was used by Truman. You can see this little spot well down below, just a little tack dialed down, just to hold it in place. That's nice. We can hold the bike horizontal to try and get a good flow on this side. We're gonna flip it like a pancake and we're gonna get a good flow on the other side. Now we're gonna throw on some flux. The flux helps it flow, uh, helps the brass adhere. Uh, cleans out any oils we have in there. So we're gonna put on some wet flux here because our brass rod's gonna be bare. So be generous with the flux. I am not a professional frame builder. We're gonna go left-handed since I'm left-handed. So keep the flame moving. Now we're going in. We're looking for a little bit of cherry red, dull, dull red. We don't want a bright, bright red. Oh, man, that is not flowing very nice. That's not good. Shows I should have done a little more paint cleaning. Good example why you want to leave these to the pros. In fact, I'd recommend get yourself to one of the various handmade bike shows. Very interesting craftsmen, willing to talk to you, see their work. There, you're gonna see some skill. More flux starting over after cleaning it up. Now, let's give it a go. Now, we got some liquid action. Be respectful of the tip. All right, 
We don't have the golden handshake, we have the brass handshake. We are off. Truman is on. All right, here it up. Here we go. Another disclaimer. We are not professionals. Just a fun experiment we are doing. All right. I think we're ready to flip. So that's that's a nice fill of the brass coming up, supporting supporting the tube where we mitered it. Yeah. That's gonna be a good I well. I like it. That we let cool. No touch. After this is the really hard, hard part. We've got to make it look nice and beautiful. But you're an artist, Calvin, yeah. so you're gonna win. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what that holds. So we're still not done. Till next time.